Okay, I'm going to show you all how to um, send a postcard to Rosa Salazar for September 9th, which we are going to call 9-9 Alita Appreciation Day. And this is a this is an opportunity for you to, to show appreciation for uh, to Rosa Salazar for her portrayal of Alita. And just generally just if you even if you're just a Rosa Salazar fan, it's just, you know, a good idea to do that. <clears throat> and we'll be sending postcards because th that'll be convenient and also convenient for their side, for Rosa and her talent agency. And because if, you know, if you get a letter, you have to open it, you don't know what's inside of it. So a, a postcard really just makes things simpler. But before I get into that, I want to just briefly go over the Sausage Roll article that I have been seeing people share around. And I'm not going to say that the person who wrote this article was intentionally trying to clickbait or cause people to panic for hype or for clicks, but it does kind of come across that way because there are a lot of things in here that just, there are a lot of leaps and, and um, uh, jumping to conclusion and that I feel like is completely uncalled for, but not to really criticize the person too much but uh, this is not a very good article. <laughs> I just say that. Um, some of the things that they say in here, first of all, the title is Alita Movie Sequel Won't Happen Unless We Act Now. And some of the things that they claim in here is that Disney is washing their hands of the film and the uh, Alita sequel won't happen. So Disney, once, once again, James Cameron owns the rights, not Disney. James Cameron, he has owned the rights since 1998 when he bought them directly from the manga creator. He, he bought the rights to the live action and animated adaptations. So that's that's completely his call. It's not Disney's call. <clears throat> and uh, and um, Disney only has the distribution rights to the first movie because Fox had the distribution rights to that first movie. But since they bought Fox and they, and, uh, or absorbed them or merged, however you want to say it, now they own those distribution rights to the first movie. So there's a good chance that the first Alita Battle Angel movie will only be streaming on, um, not only streaming, but it won't be on Netflix. It'll probably be on Disney Plus or something like that. But Jim, Jim Cameron is free to go with a sequel to any other distributor. He can go to Paramount where his Terminator movies are or even, even Universal which is probably badly in need of a franchise, especially after their monster universe failed. So Alita would be like a perfect um, a, a Jim Cameron, a new Jim Cameron franchise. They would love that. But another thing that this person says in this is that they, they claim to have an insider as well. Um, and number one, we, we can't, I don't think we can really afford to, to trust these claims of people having insiders anymore. It's to the point now where uh, you kind of you need a name. It's like give us a name that we can trace this back to. Give us an actual source. Who said what? Not just an insider. Who said who said it? Give us a name. And that's kind of what we need now because too many people can, especially the nature of news, where so many sites are just they're just copy and pasting each other's articles. Uh, nobody's really doing any research. Nobody's trying to say anything different. They're all just trying to get in. They're following the, the, and it's like a conga line, you know, <laughs> there's one article after another, all repeating the same words, repeating the same steps and nobody breaking the line and actually deciding to go do some research and find out what's really going on. And that's another reason why they got to get rid of YouTube because <laughs> we're, you know, we're actually not part of that conga line. We're going to actually look and see if there's more to the story or not. And here's another thing that they claim. Now there might, there is some truth to this whole thing about politics ruining Alita, but I wouldn't say that that's a reason for um, Disney not to make a movie because you know they would they would love to inject their own politics into it. Uh, that they've never been afraid of that, but there is probably some truth to the idea that the 
the toxicity of the Alita versus Captain Marvel war has be, has has ruined the Alita um, intellectual property. If you, I didn't say anything yesterday. I was really really tempted to, but there was a a post an a animation put on put on Twitter. And we said that this would be a bad look for Alita fans. And sure enough, it blew up. And there were all kind of people looking at it saying, wow, you know, this is um, some people. Some people had a little bit more sense. And they were like, I feel bad for the Alita fans because this one guy is messing it up for all of them. And then some of them were just like, nope, it's all of the Alita fans. This is what they're like. This is what they're about. And and that really sucks. That does. And unfortunately, because people absolutely refuse to let that Alita versus Captain Marvel war die, they they just insist on dragging Alita back into this culture war again. Alita is becoming toxic. And and Alita Army has been trying to to kill the toxicity. We've been trying to to stay out of the culture war, not taking the left or the right side, but just be if there if these were political parties, we're not Republican, we're not Democrat, we are the Alita Party. And right now the two sides are fighting over Alita and now they're also fighting over Alita Army. And Alita Army is trying to just stay in the middle. We're trying to stay out of it. <laughs> so it's you know it's it's sad, but this is what's happening to Alita right now. So there might be some truth to this what they're saying about um, the 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 accusations of Alita fans being alt alt right and and then you had the stuff with the Alita challenge becoming a protest against Captain Marvel and all this other stuff. It's just becoming really it really Alita deserves better than this. Really, Alita deserves so much better than to be used by people in their agenda. And all I can do is just try my best to keep Alita as a neutral party and free and open to everybody and they can call me a gatekeeper for that i don't care because what's really going on is that um people are using the tactics of i'm going to say quote sjw's you know and this, these are the people that they claim to hate but what they're doing is they're using the same tactics when something gets big when something gets popular like a leader army has gotten big and popular then people want to use it as a platform to push their own politics, to push their own worldview, and to claim a property for themselves. Like the same way we accuse SJWs of entering into a franchise. Like once a franchise gets successful, they enter into it, they start injecting their ideology into it, and then next thing you know, only a, f a small section of people can enjoy that thing. So we're dealing with people who only latch on to things as a platform to use it for their own political uh, reasons. And that same thing is happening to Alita Army right now, and that is happening to Alita Battle Angel. But Alita Army is trying to stay in the middle, trying to stay out of that culture war. And I don't care if they call me a coach, uh, uh, I don't care if they call me a gatekeeper for not letting people close the gate. <laughs> anyway, moving on to something else. Here, I think I've already covered them saying that um, they had the 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 source, the unnamed uh, insider, which we can't really trust. And I'm just going to just conclude this by saying that this article is I would call panic bait. <laughs> you know, Alita is not doing; she's not fan doing fantastically well right now, but she's not doing terrible either. There's a very good chance we're going to get a sequel. In fact, I'm positive Alita is going to get a sequel because of reasons that I have already said as far back as a few months ago. There are so many reasons why Alita is likely going to get a sequel, even if she lost money, even if the movie lost money. I have faith in Cameron that that would not prevent him from making an Alita sequel. But for the sake of putting Alita in the best position possible, the Alita Army will continue its goal, continue its mission to promote Alita, to push those Blu-ray sales, to reach out to people who are not Alita fans and reach out to them 
It doesn't matter if they like Captain Marvel or hate Captain Marvel. It doesn't matter. We just want everybody to be Alita fans. So we're reaching out to those people in the streets, online, Facebook, um, Twitter, wherever else you have happen to go and saying, hey, give Alita a chance, buy the Blu-ray. If you can, if you can afford it, buy, buy one for them, buy a digital for them, rent the movie for them, whatever, you know. That's what that's what Alita Army is here for. Do that for them. Thank you. And so we're just going to continue with that, and we're just going to try to um, let the bull crap pass and not even really engage and fight with these people as much as possible. We're just going to keep focus on that mission. And yep, I'm going to conclude this part of this uh, part of this video with that. Now I'm going to go to the um, the what I was telling you about the postcards. All right, so this began with an idea from Eddie McTrigger from Facebook. And he, let me get this thing out of the way. He uh, suggested, I'm just reading from what, I, from what I tweeted out here. Eddie McTrigger from Facebook is organizing an event for Alita and Rosa Salazar fans on September 9th, 2019. It's an opportunity for fans to send postcards to Rosa, showing our, her our appreciation for her or of her. If you're interested, message and provide. All right, so I'm not going to give the address in this video, or I'm not going to post it online, because it was originally posted in a closed group on Facebook, and I'm not going to publish information that might be uh, kind of sensitive, or I may not be allowed, just, just to say it may not be good <laughs> for me to post that address publicly. So if you want the address, I'm going to give you my email address and then you email me and I will give you the the address that you need to send your postcard to. And or if you don't want to email me, find me on Twitter or find me on Facebook, wherever, and um, I give it to you there. But I don't want to post it. I don't want to post it out there in the public. So, um, yeah, just email or whatever. And so here is what. I'll read some of what he posted because it'll give you an idea of what he, of what exactly he wants to do here. So he says, Eddie McTrigger says, I spoke with Rosa Salazar's talent agency on Monday about our 9-9 Alita Day idea. Happy Alita Day postcards from around the world. I didn't ask the name of the person I was transferred to. I didn't want to seem like a pushy fan, but I could tell after explaining the 99 connection that it hadn't been necessary. She was very happy about it. Oh, send them all you want. And I can tell when I'm talking to someone who's wearing a who's smiling ear to ear. I told her we were trying to keep keep it to postcards because it's simple and easy for anyone to participate anywhere in the world. But she'll probably get some cards and fan art type stuff as well. Her response was they can send all they want of anything they want or something to that effect. So I suppose letters would be fine, too. I would recommend postcards. It might be easier. But um, what else? He says, of course, if you think like her agency for a minute, you realize it's a feather in Rosa's cap, something they can use when negotiating her contracts. The size and enthusiasm of an artist fan base is a big deal. So we have to push this now. We're past the point of no return. He names some of us. Um, he uh, tags us. I'm not going to tag everybody, but it's known that we're doing this. I'm only going to tag. Uh, I'm only going to Facebook. I'm only on Facebook. I'm sorry. I'm only on Facebook, and I really only. I'm really only active in this group. I've taken it as far as I can. It's in your hands now to spread the word. So September nine, the nine nine, first annual. So what we're going to probably just call this Alita Appreciation Day. Uh, this is you'll see in the later post. Postcard to Rosa designed for maximum participation by being as simple as possible, easy to understand anywhere in the world, and targeting the individual whom the fan who the fan base loves the most are Rosalita Rosalita and away we go. Sometimes you'll see me spell it as Rosa Alita because you know it makes it searchable. Like if you want to search for Rosa and, and you know in Alita, you can find her by Rosa Alita as well. But Rosa Alita is also cool. So he goes on to say in a different post, I, I, this is cut, this is cut and pasted. So I make sure you, that you can see that it's cut and pasted um, little bits from what he was saying. 
So I'm suggesting that 9-9 be a leader appreciation day. Still the same general idea, fan letters, thank you, thank you notes, fan art, and gifts. So in case anybody missed it, I'm going to read that again. Fan letters, thank you notes, fan arts, and gifts for Rosa Salazar. There was an earlier fan mail campaign that came out of this group and got noticed but sputtered out because it became too complicated. What I'm suggesting is simple. Rosa is our beloved Rosalita, and anybody worldwide can send a thank you postcard. Those three facts get us what we want. Maximum participation. Simple. Rosa, postcard. Those points. If we make that happen, I should probably click on that and see what it says. If we make that happen, it will be a success. Again, it has the ingredients. Simple to grasp. Everybody loves Rosa and everybody can easily participate. Getting people to send Rosa a thank you postcard is probably the easiest target we could come up with. All right, um, get out of there. Now, I think there's one more. Yep, I have one more post from him. So one more. Let's see what he says here. He says, um, it would, uh, language considerations. Let's see, it's one of the reasons I thought postcards would be simplest. Uh, the simple, and then, all right, yeah, here we go. And then, the more I thought it through, Postcard is definitely the way to go. Not a card in an envelope. If you got 3,847 cards in envelopes, would you actually want to open them? Or would you want to actually open them? Hey, okay, see so a postcard. She sees she sees a picture on the front of the Sydney Opera House, Cologne Cathedral, flips it over. A little note, easy to manage, easy to enjoy. For Rosa and her talent agency, doesn't have to manage a bunch of boxes and some stacks of postcards. Uh, Manage a bunch of boxes and envelopes of all shapes and sizes. Just they can, just they can just box up the box up some sna stacks of postcards for her. But I'm reading this thing sideways. <laughs> I'm going to talk to them tomorrow about it. Okay, so he already got the address and everything. We have the address, and so all we need is for if you're if you're going to participate, just let us know. Um, like I told you, you can email me or you can find, if you're on Facebook in that group, you can um, find that post. He has it posted or find me on Twitter and get the address, DM, DM for the address. I'm not going to post it publicly. And I believe that is all. So if you want to do that, you, ha you know, you have your instructions. So go ahead and join in. So um, that, that'll be the end of this video. Thank you all for listening, and I'll talk to you later.